Well, everyone, finally, finally, a company is trying to do something different in the all-in-one liquid cooler space. This next to me is not a smartphone just hanging randomly off of my motherboard. This is part of the height thick, thick for a reason, Q60 all-in-one liquid cooler. And look, you, you're gonna look at this thing and you're going to be wondering what in the world was going through Height's head when they designed it. But there's a reason behind their madness. Well, simply put, they looked at the rest of the AIO market, laughed out loud at how boring it was, threw safety into the wind, and went full on balls to the wall crazy. They slapped insane fans onto a ridiculously thick radiator, installed two pumps, and then hung, well, that smartphone contraption off its water block. But you also have to remember that when you're approaching new product design in a supposedly different and innovative way, there are a ton of inherent risks. And some of Height's bets did absolutely pay off here, but other ones, they actually missed the mark. But you know what's not risky? That's this case from Montec. When elegance meets value, Montec's Sky 2 GX cases ensures your components can breathe properly with its innovative mesh front panel design that's easy to access. The included premium AX140 ARGB fans provide a sleek aesthetic boost, expand to EATX, load up to 11 fans, enjoy vertical GP mounting, and level up your cooling game with support for up to 360 millimeter radiators, and stay connected with a plethora of USB ports, including a fast USB-C port. The elegant airflow focus case has a vault. Check out the new Sky 2 GX down below. Okay, so from a high level perspective, there's a ton of bases I need to cover with the Q60 because everything from the fans to the radiator to the pumps to the smartphone contraption is very, very different from what you will see in a lot of other all-in-one liquid coolers. First of all, this might be the thickest radiator ever installed into an AIO. I mean, Arctic's Liquid Freezer 3, which is a chonky boy, was big, but this thing looks preposterous next to anything else. Height also added a pair of high-speed pumps directly into the radiator in a back-to-back -back configuration. But while this does technically give the Q60 incredible flow rates, it also cuts out a huge chunk of the fins, and that results in a loss of overall cooling mass. I mean, sure, Height tried to compensate with the radiator's thickness, but that'll never, ever make up for the loss of surface area. The other challenge to adding those pumps is simply there's two of them instead of one adding to the overall noise profile of this cooler. So let's have a listen to them. So basically what you just heard is that up to 75%, the pumps stay relatively quiet. But above that point, you might actually have pump noise intruding on an otherwise very, very quiet system. And that does cause an issue for a lot of people because when you're going with a thick radiator and thick fans like this, what ends up happening is a lot of folks want to focus on pure silence. So you're going to end up having to run those pumps at a much lower rate than you normally would. There's also an extended reservoir, which might look a bit weird with its super high profile, but add the fans and everything blends perfectly together. If height does one thing right, it's aesthetics. This thing looks great, but honestly, there's no easy way to hide such a chunky design. I should also mention that that little RGB logo in the reservoir, that's not actually a fill port. It's just there for some additional RGB. And other than that sumo sized radiator and the dual pumps, it's the Q60's fans that actually contribute a lot to its claimed performance. And there's good reason for that too, because on paper at least, the thick FP12 is one of the highest performance fans around. Full stop. As a matter of fact, at 32 millimeters, these are some of the thickest on the consumer market. And all of that points toward it being a potential T30 killer. We're actually gonna find that out in an upcoming review. Other than the insane specs, there's also a few more tricks up its sleeve, like sensors for thermals and positioning, along with a cable-free installation between the fans. The only thing you need to take into account with the FP12 fans is they need to get excessively loud in order to deliver the performance that they're claiming. 3000 RPM is basically the same as the T30, but these things, these things absolutely scream.
So for everybody keeping track at home, the Height Q60 is, without a doubt, the loudest cooler that we have ever tested when it's running at or near its full RPM levels. But, and this is so important, at 1800 RPM and below, it is also the quietest 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler we've tested yet. But like I said before, Height threw everything they possibly could at this. They threw everything including the kitchen sink at it. But that also leads to some installation nightmares. Out of the box, you might be surprised to see that Height pre-installs the fans in a pull configuration. That's because the Q60 isn't compatible with top mounting in most enclosures. But if your case supports 280 millimeter AIOs in a push-pull configuration, it's guaranteed to fit. By the way, if you're looking for a compatibility list, it's on the last page of Height's online installation manual. Anyways, let's take the Corsair 5000D as an installation example for a typical ATX case these days. There's no way this thing is gonna fit into the top mount position since the fans smash right into the motherboard. Even challenges when front mounting due to the oversized reservoir causing screw hole misalignments. The entire AIO needs to be moved into the lowest position possible, which in this case means removing part of the power supply shroud. And well, you'll definitely see this thing through a window. And the end result is, well, I'm actually gonna say this is not the prettiest thing that I've ever seen installed into a case. Anyways, once you do manage to get it installed, connecting things is pretty easy. Power comes from a six pin PCIe connector and primary control is done through a USB interface. Meanwhile, thank you very much. And Corsair, I hope you're watching this because Height has included a standard three pin fan header so you can modify pump and fan speeds in parallel through your motherboard. Board. And actually that's a really nice addition on Height's part because in today's market, every single manufacturer, it seems they, they wanna tie you to their dodgy ass software. It doesn't matter if it's Cam or IQ or whatever else, at least Height gives you a fallback option in case their software goes down. But you will still need to use that Nexus software of theirs because it's the only way to control the screen and the RGB on this thing. Now, that also speaks a lot towards the ecosystem approach that Height is trying to achieve here. They want to sell you the case, they want to sell you the AIO, and they want you to use their software. And it works pretty damn well. Because the Q60 fits like a glove into the Y40, Y60, and Y70 cases, since it simply gets mounted to the side intake and looks perfectly integrated. And those radiator mounted pumps also contribute to the overall clean look since the tubes can exit from the bottom without causing any issues in the loop. Anyways, the last stop I wanted to make on this tour of the Q60's hardware is of course the selling point for a lot of you guys. It's that screen. And to some people, it'll be the most ridiculous thing ever created, while for others, it's gonna be like the icing on the cake in the AIO market. It uses a five inch IPS panel with a 720 by 1280 resolution, 60 Hertz refresh rate, and 300 nits of brightness. This all runs off a dedicated dual processor setup with integrated memory, storage, and a dedicated graphics engine. Its ability to display everything from weather to videos to static images will make the Q60 an absolutely stunning addition to a build. Underneath of that display, there's a 42 pixel QRGB array that can give super unified underglow to the whole CPU socket area. And the entire setup can pivot to whatever angle you want. My only problem with it is that it feels, whenever you move it, it feels a little bit janky. And truth be told, we actually broke one of these things at Computex last year, but supposedly Height has completely revamped the mounting mechanism. I just don't feel like I would be transporting this to like a, a LAN party or something. I also don't like the fact that it rests on your GPU when you have a larger GPU installed. Now, the other thing that you have to take into account about something like this is that a very expensive all-in-one liquid cooler like the Q60 will live and die by its software. And luckily, thank freaking God, even though it's still in its infancy, Height's Nexus software is really something that is unique, surprisingly intuitive, and something that didn't crash all that much for us. So look, the software, it's great, but full transparency here. I built this system from the ground up with the Q60, and I've been using it for the better part of a month here at the office. And the entire experience, it has not been completely flawless. The first thing, 
that I have to say is, of course, the price. You are paying a premium for the privilege of owning what is probably the most unique all-in-one liquid cooler on the market right now. You can show this to your friends and they're all gonna say, what in the world is that? And a couple of people have come by the office and said exactly that. It is $300 US. Right now when I'm recording this video, it's not available in Canada, but if it is available, I'll put the price probably right up there. And if you can get past that well, the tubes are incredibly hard to work with since they're so darn stiff. A situation that's made even harder since the unit housing the CPU block and LCD screen can't be rotated. So the tubes always exit from the bottom. That means that they will always rest on top of a horizontally mounted GPU or press against a vertically mounted one. And to add some insult to injury, the sleeving on our review unit actually started to unravel on one end, which is not a good look for such a premium product. There's also a USB port on one side for the integrated Nexus hub, but it doesn't get a cover. I know I'm nitpicking here, but it's just odd on a design that pays so much attention to detail. On the software side, well, it wasn't all perfect either. At one point, Nexus experienced a massive memory leak, while at other times it just crashed outright. So obviously there's going to be a couple of teething pains with any new product, especially when it comes to the software stack, but I have to give height credit. Nexus has been a, a dream come true compared to the disasters and hair pulling out situations that IQ and Cam have had here in the office. Now you have to take into account here, Cam and IQ have been around forever compared to Nexus and they still can't get that shit right. But look, I'm digressing here because what we have with the Q60 is very straightforward. We have the thickest, most massive 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler currently available on the market and it is tied to an extremely high price. So of course there are some very, very high expectations for its performance. And to find out how it performs, we are going to start with the Intel gaming results. And right away, the Height Q60 is one of the best 240 millimeter AIOs we've ever tested across the entire decibel range. But what it can't actually do is beat the Fantex T30 until it gets a lot louder. And exactly how much louder? Well, the T30 tops out at 51 decibels, while this thing needs to hit 53 decibels to get noticeably better results before eventually topping out around 58 degrees at an insane 55 decibels. But if you don't care about the screen or looks at all, there's still a lot better coolers out there for your money, like the Liquid Freezer series and even the Frozen Edge, which costs about, hold on to your hats here guys, one seventh the price of the Q60 in most regions. The full load 180 watt results show good but not class leading numbers, with it being beaten by the T30, Nucleus, and even the super affordable Thermal Right Frozen Edge at most decibel levels. So while the Q60 is competitive, it seems to thrive in situations with higher ambient temperatures like gaming. We also have to take into account that a low 180 watts of thermal load causes a plateauing of performance for most coolers. So it doesn't matter if you take something cheap or ultra expensive, the temperature delta will be minimal. Moving on to 253 watts and it's the same story. The Q60 is an amazing AIO between a 37 and 40 decibel sweet spot, but then it only picks up its performance at 46 decibels decibels and beyond. Otherwise, the T30 tends to be a better pick from a raw performance standpoint, if you can find it, and that's a big question mark. Also, most people buying the Q60 won't care all that much about raw performance. They'll probably be getting this thing for its super unique screen. Great temperatures are just along for the ride, and yet when raw thermal mass matters, like in our no limits test, this thing starts to really pull ahead. That's actually great news for people who want some future proofing, since processors keep getting hotter and hotter. But is the price actually worth it? Well, that's debatable. You can buy seven frozen edges for the price of a single height Q60, but then again, I can't fault anyone who wants to pay for the uniqueness factor of this cooler. Moving on to gaming on an AM5 system, and I was actually shocked when I saw these numbers. The Q60 is only one of a few coolers on this planet that offer great results on both AMD and Intel when used in a gaming focused system. I mean, sure, the Liquid Freezer 3 and LT520 both cost a whole lot less, but this is still an impressive result, mostly because other AIOs that have a similar focus on adding a unique spin to your case like the Kraken, 
Tough Liquid, D30, and Ryujin get beaten cleanly by the Q60. However, the real Achilles heel for this cooler is its performance at lower heat loads, like on a 7600X. I mean, I'm not sure how many people will pair up one of the planet's most expensive 240mm AIOs with a budget CPU, but if you do, don't expect good cooling value for your money. Because these numbers, well, they're mediocre at best and embarrassing for a $300 AIO at worst. But if you look a little bit closer, it's not like they're super unique since the T30 also slides way backwards here. Moving on to a 7700X doesn't really change the Q60 standings all that much. At reasonable noise levels under 40 decibels, it's a mid-tier performer at best, and it can only distinguish itself above 50 decibels, so it needs to get loud to deliver the best results on AM5. Some of these mid-tier results might actually come down to contact pressure, since a lot of coolers have similar issues on AMD's single CCD processors. Meanwhile, Arctic ROG and Deepcool seem to have figured things out pretty well. And move on to a dual CCD design like the 7950X and suddenly things look a lot better for height. Obviously the sheer size of this thing's radiator factors into this equation, but it really makes you wonder how good the Q60 could have been if height had paid just a little bit more attention to their AM5 mounting. Seeing yet another cooler focused primarily on Intel temperatures is disappointing, but honestly, not surprising. So where does this all leave us with the height Q60? And I'm gonna speak from my heart here because after reviewing so many coolers in the last couple of years, I love when something comes to me and it's different. It doesn't matter if it was that crazy looking Silverstone thing or the Height Q60. It's so important that companies start to think outside the box because we have effectively, in a lot of respects, reached a plateau for CPU cooling. And considering what's coming down the line right now, we're gonna need a hell of a lot of innovation. The only problem is that with every innovation, there are risks. And this thing, it's not perfect. The price is high, compatibility is limited, installation can be a pain in the butt, the software does have a few bugs that need to be ironed out, and if you're looking for a whisper quiet system, the dual pumps do make a lot of noise. From a raw performance perspective though, this is one of the better 240mm all-in-one liquid coolers we've tested, but it only becomes great at high noise levels or when it's paired up with a flagship CPU. Which makes sense, I guess, because Height is targeting this thing at PC builders who have money to burn, which is perfectly okay. I can't fault this thing for its price because of what it does, the package that it offers. But if anything, I hope that Height's approach on this leads to more innovation in the PC cooling space. It proves that you can do something different and still achieve most of your goals. So anyways, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.